Welcome back to Desktop. Today, we're talking about the SMS Lasers HXFC. This is a 1000 round review and test, and I'm hoping you guys understand the format as we get into it. Let's get some disclosures out of the way. Yes, SMS Lasers sent me these units for review. They sent me three laser units for this review, and this is a two-part review. The first part's a 1000 round review. That's the one you're watching now. And the second part's going to be after I've put 5000 rounds on another unit. SMS Lasers in no way paid me to give them good review here, guys. You know how we do these tests. You know I beat the shit out of things, and you know I hit them. I'm going to tell you that something sucks if it sucks. Them giving me a product does not skew my opinion in any way, shape, or form. And that is, well, what you're going to find out when I get into this video. You're probably wondering why this review is a voiceover and not a regular review. And uh, to be honest, it's because I've never had a company do something like SMS Lasers has done. Um, they've improved the product rapidly um to the point where my review that i filmed with it doesn't even have all the up-to-date features so this review is a voiceover recorded at the latest possible time in an attempt to get all the new updates in this and i am hoping that you guys understand i'm making a review on the units that i received already but there are improvements made based on my complaints and other complaints that i've heard about and that i filmed on my review this last week this makes it a little difficult to give an honest review or a valid review to be completely straightforward but I burned over a thousand rounds and so I'm gonna give you the latest information that I have and I'm gonna give you a review um, I'm a little bit different than focus trip here um, he told you guys don't buy it yet and I would say go ahead and buy one because of all the updates that he's already made and then be ready to buy another one so let's start off with what do you get for 245 bones well the HXFC has a new IR illuminator and IR laser Visible Illuminator, Visible Laser from SMS Lasers, coming in at 8.4 ounces. In the package, you get a device, a battery, a charger, a little instruction pamphlet that you definitely need to look at because it'll teach you how to put it into high power mode, and a tail switch. Light claims to have 1,000 lumens and 80,000 candela, which would make it completely usable and reasonably priced as just a weapon light. The IR unit and laser have a low power mode and a high power mode uh, that you can switch to very easily. Uh, my recommendation is obviously to switch it into high power mode and then adjust the power down. Um, never, there's no reason for it to come in low power mode. I don't even know why that exists. But my first impression of these units is that they appeared to be very well made. They felt metal construction, all metal body. The buttons were really good. The switch is really good. They were firm clicks. Um, they were a little bit easy to adjust on the turrets for zero. Um, but then I decided I needed to take it to the range and see if it can hold zero under recoil to see if the turrets were actually loose or not. Um, I decided to hit it as I normally do and do all the regular abuse that you'd expect for a thousand rounds. Mounting the device to my AR was very easy. They had the little springs on the Picatinny rails, so it's, uh, got constant tension on it so that it doesn't, like, wobble back and forth and make it a pain to put on. Uh, it's a nice feature. The Engall and D-Ball clones from Somo Gear, they do not have that and it's honestly something that's missed. Um, it's also able to be torqued down on the rail because it has two interface points as opposed to just one, which makes it feel a lot more secure and a lot more durable. I went ahead and marked mine with a paint pen to ensure that they were not walking without loctiting them, and they appeared to hold uh, without moving for the entirety of the test. Before we go too much further, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking to yourself, why do I want a white light and IR combo laser? Not just like a white light and then also just get an illuminator. Um, okay, so not talking about the price point here because an all-in-one price point is way lower. The weight savings and rail space savings of having one unit and then also only needing one button um, and one wired switch is a big factor to me. Um, the unfortunate thing is that until now, the two units have been uh, kind of crappy illumination or crappy IR, and this appears to be a first step in the right direction for both good illumination and good IR. Before we get too deep into the video, I'm going to remind you to press the subscribe button and support our sponsors who support the channel and keep us alive. That's Gideon Optics and Arrowhead Tactical Apparel. Remember, if you use the code PLEASE on their website, we get a discount and it lets them know to keep supporting us and our content. Let's get back into it. What's interesting here is while filming this review, I've already received feedback from SMS Lasers. Um, I'm talking about improvements that they're making and flaws that testers like us are finding in their products for new versions to come out. Um, so this is really interesting to me because usually when a company tells me about these improvements and they tell me about these changes that they're making, uh, nothing ever happens. And I don't think anything of it. I consider it kind of a political move, but SMS Lasers has not only sent me a video of an improved version of the unit with a uh, better push button response, which was awesome because my first complaint here was the push button on the unit. 
Um, the new version is better. It goes more like the Somo Gears, where it's two press on and one press for temporary or momentary, which feels a lot better, in my opinion. Um, so you're probably wondering, like, how bright is the white light and laser? Does it hold zero? And, um, well, the white light, honestly, it's about as bright as a TR1HL, which makes it pretty bright, plenty usable. Um, here's it next to a TR1HL, next to a Surefire Scout, next to a Surefire Turbo, and then, just for fun, next to my Goonbeam. So now we're getting into the test at about 500 rounds. I decided to confirm zero, and I'll just let you kind of see how that okay. went. So uh, 500 rounds. We have finally hit 500 rounds. This is the mag. Puts us there. We're at 15-ish in this. We'll burn through 500. We're going to confirm zero and confirm our markings. Uh, you can see on the gun right here, there's no movement of these screws that have been tightened down once. If you can see that. Um, water in the lenses. I gotta continuously press the uh, autofocus button. Yep. And here we go. Laser is still visible, no problem. All right, and uh, that's uh, 500. No visible shift. And again, on target, no, no shift. So we're still good. The laser is still zeroed even at 500 rounds. And uh, this gun is super hot, so hot that we changed cans and it's still hot. And now it's spitting gas in my face. Now, a big thing with me living in the Pacific Northwest is finding out if things are waterproof. And unfortunately for me, I didn't have any issues in the rain, but I did submerge the entire unit in water just to cool my suppressor when we were doing the thousand round burst. And uh, I've done this with many other units, and the Engol, actually, and D-Ball that we used for these have been submerged in water multiple times. Uh, unfortunately, it did not hold up. Maybe 30 seconds in the water, and we have water inside the lens and inside the housing, and that remains there to date. Um, that's an important note. Uh, I continued to use the exact same laser for the rest of the test, the, the thousand rounds, because I had already burned 500, and it still turned on, it still kept working. Water just got inside the housing and lens, which obviously resulted in a slightly dimmer white light, and then uh, the complete degradation of the IR uh, light itself. This became really unfortunate because even when the water drained out, it was fogged up, and uh, in my opinion, that makes the device basically uh, worthless. Um, confirming zero at a thousand rounds now to see if it works or if it'll shift. I will let you guys see kind of how that works. Thousand went. rounds, confirming zero with the uh, laser. Uh, again, no visible shift. That was me shooting poorly, but now we're going to whack it. I think that that's appropriate. So uh, I got a rock here. This is a tool, a very unique tool, even. And we'll whack the top too. There's no like good place to hit this. There we go. Whatever. And I accidentally pushed the button on there. Here we go. There is a visible shift. There's a visible shift, not from the screws, but I'm guessing from the turrets, uh, cause I dented it. And hold on, it actually did dent with the rock here. Let's see if the battery still comes out because that's a pretty good inward dent. Would you agree? I would agree. That is a pretty significant dent. Make sure the battery can still come out. Sure can. Sure, sure can. I mean, there's definitely a dent in there. It sure is dent. Doesn't fall out, but. All right, well, let's put this back on. And um, it shifted slightly. Just slightly. I think it looks like a one MOA shift. Not enough where I'm willing to say that it didn't just settle on the rail um, because my grouping is still pretty much the same. Yeah, it's close. I would say it probably shifted over maybe like an inch or so. Nothing crazy. I'm going to give it a full good amount of wax here on the rock, on the on the wood. I'd do it. And then, ah, there we go. All right, we're going to give it a few good wax here on the wood. Let me uh, clear the firearm first. That's safe. Cool. Yeah, whatever. You can go right there. Okay. Oh, my stock broke. Oh, wow. Shout out to 
Reptilia. Dude, that's the second time you've broken a stock on this thing. Hey, but at least it kind of went back together. Yeah. yeah, it's a cool stock. It's just not that great for durability, but you know. Uh, all right, well, well, no one will say I didn't whack it hard, dude. They always do. They always do. So let's get a good shot of that. Good close up. How's our exposure? Uh, one third. Oh, cool. Yeah, it's pretty nasty. <laughs> we did whack it. Does it still work? Yeah, lights, laser still on. Light, visible light laser. We're still on. You can see that, right? Cool. All right. Let's see if it stayed zero. Five shots at the head. Not even close to zero, by the way. Holy cow, that's actually way off. So that's, you can see the green dot on the head, right? Yep. Camera. Green dot placed on the head. Actually, it's not that far off, to be honest. But if you want to come here. Green dot was here. Shot here. So we shifted from smacking it with a rock and beating it into a tree to the point where it is completely a dented unit. Uh, we shifted three MOA That's not bad. and it's up on diagonal. That would still be a kill shot at distance. So um, yeah, it can take a beating. It can, it can, uh, it can definitely take a beating. So uh, it didn't break either. No. Which like all, a bunch of the other ones have. I think, so this is, you guys saw our Engol test. The Engols just exploded when we hit it into the tree. I think the thing with these is that they're a metal body, so it's not going to just shatter and it's just going to turn on and work. So the big thing we care about is zero shift. So yeah, the units can take some bashing. The units can take some whacking. The units can take some thumping. They don't break. They don't stop working. They get dented um, and they keep moving. Um, I got a three MOA shift from the laser after hitting it a whole bunch of times. And my guess is because of the way that the turrets are not recessed into the unit in any way, shape or form, I probably whacked one of the turret screws directly with it um, or on something which would have caused a shift. And unfortunately, there's no way to verify that because I'm just hitting things ooga dooga, thing go bang. Honestly, I think the biggest frustration from this review is something that benefits the consumer, and that's that SMS Lasers has been just making improvements the entire time that I've been filming, to the point that now my three units that I have received from them um, are outdated. So what I'm going to do is wait until the unit stops having changes made, purchase a final unit, and do my 5,000 review based on the newest, latest, greatest, updated final unit. One of the complaints I've seen about the IR Illuminator is how slow or difficult it is to adjust, and while for me it was not difficult to adjust, the wheel seemed very easy to spin and access even with my gloves. It did, however, take forever to adjust the diameter as the wheel just kept spinning and spinning and spinning and spinning before you would finally get some adjustments. So would I buy a unit? Yeah. Uh, I would, and I'm going to. Uh, would I tell you to buy a unit with all the new improvements that I've seen while making my video? Yes, I would say it's okay to buy a unit. I think that SMS lasers will, however, continue to improve the product. So if you're going to be one of those people who wants the latest, greatest, best of the bunch, maybe hold off until the unit is complete and there are no more changes to be made. I'm assuming that by the time the 18650 model releases, all of the important changes will have been made. So... That being said, thank you SMS Lasers for sending me three of these units to test. I will now be purchasing my own units to do a 5,000 round review. Thanks guys, and we'll catch you on the flippity flip.